Hey, Nick Bogot with Sweetwater. I'm here with this man from Sweden, the six-string supernova, Mr. Yngwie J. Malmsteen. And he's on his new tour, and his record comes out on vinyl. What's it called, my friend? World on Fire. There you go, World on Fire. Yes. You also have a book, I believe. I do. And it's available where? On Amazon.com. <laughs> it's called Relentless. There you go. Yes. Amazon.com, folks, yeah. anyway. Make sure it's called Relentless. It's the only good one. Yes. Thanks for doing this, first and foremost. Yeah, thank you. Just want to go back with a little bit about how you got to where you are today, because it's been quite a journey. How much time have you got? Yeah, we'll, we'll, try, <laughs> we'll, try, and, <laughs> we'll try and keep it short, sharp, sweet, yeah. but fascinating, okay. allegedly. Right. Sure. So, your family was musical, but you weren't interested until the, in the guitar at all, or music in general, until you saw a certain guy on TV. Uh, when you were, that would be Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. Yes. And that was the date he passed, I believe. Yes, September 18th, 1970. Yeah. And what caused that? What happened was that my, my older brother and sister were really good playing play in Japan and Mozart all over. My, my mother was a jazz singer, my father's a guitar player, my grandfather's a drummer, my uncle's an opera singer, and so on and so on. Everybody in, very musical spoke about musical terms. Um, and so my fourth birthday, I got a violin. My sixth birthday, I got a, no. My, my fifth birthday, I got a guitar. Okay. My seventh birthday, I got a trumpet. Or something, or sixth birthday, yeah. Right. But I, did, I, I didn't bother with it, you know. And then September 18th, they showed on TV, they said Jim Hendrix died, and they showed him smashing and burning the guitar. And I liked that. So, so it was destruction and yes. an arson. Uh, <laughs> that was the initial thing, but I, I, the musical part became obviously more important. Oh, yeah, obviously. Mm -hmm. So were you serious from the get go? Was I'm that very it? Very serious, yes. And you oh, quickly, yeah. so you started off obviously doing rock, but you quickly went into uh, classical music. Yeah, so I listened to all these blues records, and um, they were great. Clapton, John Mayall, and, and even Blackmore with the bluesy stuff. I didn't have, I didn't have any Hendrix records. Then eventually I heard Je uh, Genesis with P Peter Gabriel in about 74 or something. It's only little little kid. And I didn't really understand the difference then, but something struck me about the, the inversions and the diminished chords and the pedal notes and all that stuff, very slow, Port Corpus questions, but they weren't bluesy, and I loved it. So I found out that was very Baroque influenced, and my mom had a lot of Bach records and Vivaldi and so on. So I started listening to that, and I still love the Marshall stacks, and I still love my electric guitar and play loud, but I, I, I like to take the melodic content of classical, uh, Baroque classical music. And eventually listen to jo uh, Nicola Paganini as well, which is the solo violin stuff. Yeah, which amazing. Is, that's, that was my biggest influence. Gotcha. Yeah. Now, how did Mike, for a lot of people, including myself, the first time I was aware of you was when you were in the Pages of a Guitar Player yeah. on Mike Varney's Spotlight. How did he find a kid from Sweden? Well, when I used to travel uh, from my mom's house to my grandmother's building in the in city where there was my, my uncle's studio, he had a studio, right. I would have to take a train and switch trains. And it was a big, like, newsstands all over. So I would buy New Musical, New Musical Express and Melody Maker and guitar player. Okay. Or buy it all the time, from, like from when I was a little kid, you know. And one day I see this sanded tape. And I go, yeah, well, I'm sure they're going to take my tape. So I, I didn't know. I didn't, but what do I got to lose? So I sent a tape and a black star on it. It had a few songs on, on the tape, right? And before I knew it, I just got his phone calls from all over the place. Because he had taken a tape and played for everybody. Right. Every big... Every, everybody. So it was, it was all of a sudden I had all these offers. And I came to America in 1982. And that's how, that's... A, yeah, that was the start. Yeah. And so I, know, I can remember exactly where I was when I heard that, because it was, it blew my mind, because wow. it was like something I'd never heard before. And it kind of raised, it didn't only raise the bar, in my opinion, it kind of reinvented the bar. It took it to a different place because of your classical influences. Mm. How do you maintain that your accuracy not just vertically, but horizontally as well, like that way and this way. Your accuracy and your precision, your speed uh, to a mere mortal like me are mm -hmm. kind of petrifying. What does it take just to maintain that? How many hours a day do you throw in or did you throw in to get to oh, where you the, are? Initially, it was, it was insane. You know, it was ba basically all waking hours. Really? Yes. And I would sacrifice everything. I wouldn't go to school and, you know, <coughs> uh, you know, and then when I was a teenager, you know, they, they, would, they had to drag me to like parties and stuff like that. Cause you know. You were playing? Oh yeah. I was extremely dedicated. I was to the point of insanity really, I think. Well, thank it God. It was crazy. Thank I mean, goodness. I was, I was just, and I, like, like for instance, I, I was waiting for the bus. 
got walk from my mom's house to the bus station with a guitar. And it was like freezing cold. I mean, Sweden. Get on the bus, 15 minute ride. The guitar would come out of the case. I would play for 15 minutes. Come to the train station, put the guitar in the case, go onto the train for 45 minutes. The guitar came out again, and I would play 45 minutes going into the city, and then go straight from the station to my studio and sit there until the last train came on. And to this day, we've just watched you um, sound check. You need more amps, by the way. Ah, yeah, I've been working on it. This one more there. <laughs> <laughs> you have one of my favorite sayings with regards to this. Can you give it to me? Well, it's actually someone else, someone else that said it is, if you go to outer space, if you go to the out, outer space and look down on the earth, there's two man-made objects you can see. You see the Great Wall of China and this wall right here. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the only ones. Perfect. And how about now, just to maintain what you've got, the, the speed and the dexterity and the accuracy, how many hours do you throw in a day now? Not so much. Really? No. It, I do. I play, I have the guitar in front of TV, you know, right. a little Marshall in the living room, you know. I always sit in front of TV. I always play, but it's more like um, I play when I'm inspired, you know. It's not like I don't make it do it. It's not like, oh, I have to do it. It just happens by itself. When I would play, I would like approach it as it was a show, even when I play for myself. Really? Yeah. Everything had to be perfect at the spot. No, no, do it over, do it over, do it over. Now, did you tape yourself to help yes. improve that? Yes. Why am I not surprised to hear that? Yeah, I would. I would always record. Gotcha. Always. And then listen back and be your own mm -hmm. best or worst yes, critic? absolutely. That, that's the best trick. Gotcha. Because you hear things they might not think of, you know. Now, you've talked about what you listened to when you started. What about now? What do you listen to now? Is there anything new that inspires you, or are you still...? I, not really. I mean, you know, because I'm so, like on the road or from home, I'm in the studio a lot, whatever. So I, I don't really necessarily listen to music, per se, so much. Gotcha. And if I do, it's mostly classical, or some old purple, or some right, right. purple, you know, old stuff. Now, question, being as you've skipped school a lot to play guitar, and like I said before, we're glad you did, mm -hmm. if you didn't play guitar, what do you think you'd be doing right now? Um, it's a hard question, you know. But, I mean... It, Bass? No. <laughs> I, I don't know, somehow I would have fallen into the music, I think. Gotcha. You know? Yeah, it's a passion thing, yeah. isn't it? Well, I've got two more questions to you, okay. if you don't mind. First and foremost, do you have any, you've achieved a lot, you've won awards all over the world, you've recorded with orchestras, you're lauded by your peers and the public alike. Do you still have goals? Are there some things you haven't done I yet that you'd like to do? I actually do, because I, I look at every day as a new day. And every, like tonight's show has to be the best show. You know, last night's show was a great show, sure. But tonight has to be, I never rest on my laurels per se. So in, in a sense, even though that might not be, okay, I'm gonna do this, whatever. No, every day has to be a, a day that counts, you know. Can't be a wasted day. Gotcha. I never say, ah, whatever, do it tomorrow. Whatever. No, so I'm very, in that sense, I'm very um, um, dedicated to, to always kind of like keep doing something that I would consider good, you know. Yeah, so whatever, whatever that is, is tonight's show or, or, or whatever, you know, recording something, but it doesn't matter, writing something. It, it has to be something that I be excited about and I feel proud of that moment. Don't say, well, I did that, so I don't have to worry about it now, because I don't do that. I don't look back. Gotcha. I always, today's a new day, you know. That's a great attitude. Yeah. I must say, for those who've never had the privilege of watching this man sound check, I've seen them maybe eight or nine sound checks when there's literally just me and a few guys. Everything he does on stage live, he does in the sound check. The guitar spins, the guitar. You didn't throw the guitar today, but I've seen you throw the guitar yeah, in the sound check too. Because I had the packs with him. Right. <laughs> Kicking the picks and everything. So you, you aren't playing, this is not a rest, you aren't resting on your laurels at all. You're practicing. I your don't trade. like it. You know, I mean, I know there are certain things that, you know, you, you kind of expect you to do in the show and some songs as well. Right. But I always, want well, to do a little different, so. Excellent. My last question would be, if there are some youngsters or oldsters watching this, what would your advice be to them to maybe follow in your footsteps a little way along the same path you've done? The most important thing is what I'm telling my son, because he's an amazing musician. The most important thing, because the industry is 
not so much anymore, but it, it's, it's still to some point is the industry will tell you you should do this or your friends will tell you you should do that or you know the press will tell you or, or the, whatever they call the media now. Um, sometimes you get good stuff, sometimes you get really bad stuff. And you should never get affected by either one because what the most important thing is you find what you love. You find what you love and you do that. And you totally ignore uh, water of a duck, everything. You cannot be worrying about what other people think because then if you do that, you know, you never gotta get, I mean, you gotta be second guessing yourself all the time. You have to be sure that what you do is what you love to do because if you love it, at least you, you love it, you know. And be maybe another 100,000 people love it too, and some other people might not like it. It doesn't matter because what you have to express what you want to express. You only live once. You know, it's the most important thing. I don't think we can finish with a better piece of advice than that. Ingvay, thank you so much, my friend. Appreciate it. it.